do a gong show. He was so entertaining that we decided to have Keith come back for the special occasion. He has written for little known TV shows such as Seinfeld, Jimmy Kimmel Live, and Politically Incorrect. He's gone overseas five times to entertain our U.S. troops. He's an alumnus of, US, of the U of R here in town and has appeared with many stars including Jerry Seinfeld, Ray Romano, John Stewart, Louis Black, and Joan Rivers. He was available to come tonight because his career is not working out the way he'd hoped. <laughs> Please welcome a man who swore he would never set foot in this club again, Keith Barony. Thank you. Thank you so much. It is so exciting to be at the Irondequoit Country Club located in a town that's not Irondequoit. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> It's in Pittsburgh, but unless you go to MapQuest, in which case it's Rochester, so it's, you people just do not want to be found, I get it. <laughs> this is, uh, we've got a lot to talk about with Bruce, but let me, uh, for the, I don't know how many of you were here at the Gong Show, but I will try and do with material that I did not do then, before we get into Bruce's section of the evening. Um, I, uh, I just want to say that there are people here that have been members for, as Mark pointed out, you know, uh, 73 years, which means uh, that like, she was a member 40 years before, 43 years before you got here, and you are what I like to call a quitter, okay? <laughs> I don't know how you live with yourself. <laughs> this lady has stamina. You're a pathetic shell of a man. That's what you are. You make me sick. I'm not even going to look at you. <laughs> There were people here that were members of so long that when they were members, Jews were winning the tournament. <laughs> when was the last time that happened? The minute we started bringing Gentiles into the club, we started losing that title. We are not athletic. I don't care how many 60-year-old Jewish balding men come out of the woodwork to say we are. We are not athletic. It's time we make peace with it, okay? I grew up, I, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. First of all, I, I'm an only child, okay? Uh, but my two brothers were not. Uh, those they drank the Kool-Aid my parents were dishing out. What were my parents dishing out, you want to know? I'll tell you. Orthodox Judaism, how about that for a ride? Yeah. For those of you that are not hip to that particular dynamic, Orthodox Judaism is like being raised Amish, but without all the glamour usually associated with Amish and I dated within the Amish community, so that's not a shot at the Amish. I had one of my best relationships. I dated an Amish girl for four and a half months, and it was the easiest breakup I ever had, because I just said, I'll call you, you know? And uh, <laughs> by the time she caught on, I was two counties over, you know? Was, she had four horses, but I had a Chevy Nova, and that's like 96 horses. So I was getting away from her 23 times faster than she was getting away from me, and that's what's important, so we got away from one another. So, um, for those of you that don't know, it's just a little primer to uh, the, uh, the uh, this is the way we talk. This is, we Jews are so crazy, this is the way we talk. Those of you who, who are non-Jews, this is how we talk. Yeah, my, every time I bring a girl home to meet my mother when I was growing up, my mother would say, she's lovely. Is she Jewish? Or is she a non-Jew? Not really the most efficient way of dividing the Earth's population. <laughs> Jews are one sixteenth of one percent of the planet's population. We're thirty-two percent of the Nobel Prize winners. I'm not saying we're not. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I have a Nobel Prize in my family. My dad's uncle. I'll, get, I'll ask the women in the room, and in particular the moms. If your baby has never displayed any weird balance issues, but all of a sudden starts to fall over on a regular basis, your little infant, where do you check for an infection? In the ears, that's right, because that's the balance mechanism. My dad's uncle is the guy that figured that out, and that was important because prior to that discovery, uh, the number of cases reported of infantile alcoholism <laughs> were inaccurate and excessive, to say the least. But um, anyway, so yeah, for those of you that are, are non-Jews, let me explain to you what the Jewish world is like. We don't, uh, nothing is simple with our people. Yeah, we can't just pray. We gotta have a, something called a minion. That is a prayer quorum. And depending on how you were raised, how badly you were damaged by your parents, that determines the strict rules dictate. For instance, like I was Orthodox, and I said to my rabbi, I, I was growing up in Manhattan, and I said to him, what, you know, I didn't know I was gonna wind up in Rochester where there were people. I said to him, what if I'm in an outpost in Wyoming somewhere? And I need to get a minion together, a prayer quorum. What can you give me? He says, well, it's 10 bar mitzvah men. I said, no, I know that's the rule. I'm asking for a little Wyoming leniency here. 
No, 10 bar mitzvah men. That's the orthodox. The next level are the conservatives. Women, appropriately, and should count towards a prayer quorum the same way men do. And in fact, if you only have nine Jews and a conservative, uh, what else, what can make the tenth for a minion? The Torah. Isn't that beautiful? That's a very spiritual thing. But my, I'll be honest with you. My favorite is the Reform, because the Reform Jews are solution-oriented people. Reform, five Jews and a mirror, good enough. You know two Jews, and the cantor will alter your pants. That's where we get the phrase alter cocker. I don't know if you know that. Anyway, but so it is just nice to see that, uh, that the Jews can get together and make sure that the Gentiles win the tournaments. That's all I'm saying. We are not the most athletic people in the world. You just, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm athletic. I play basketball, my all orthodox, all male yeshiva. As it's coming out of my mouth, I'm realizing how unimpressive that is. Yeah. I'm 5'10, I played center, if that gives you some sense of it. What an awesome force we were. Yeah, we won 1 1 and lost 22 the season I started. But we didn't care. After each loss, we would sue the other team, you know, because our feeling was a court victory is a court victory. That was our time. You just, you just. Jesus, I mean, you're just not going to go down to the stadium on a Sunday afternoon during football season and hear the announcer, starting at quarterback now, number 43, 3, 3, 3, 3. Jaime Goldberg. <laughs> See the guy in the pocket, 36, marked down to 28, 22, but for you, 1950. <laughs> so, uh... By the way, I gotta tell you a story, since I brought up my mother, who is dividing the world into two groups of people. It's, uh, my grandmother used to do the same thing. My grandmother was the funniest person I ever met. And she, every time something would happen in the room, those were the two groups of people that she felt made up the entire world's population. Like, when I was eight years old, it was Thanksgiving, I broke a drinking glass. My grandmother, with a broom and a mop and a lecture at the ready, she's telling me, well, there's two types of people in this world. People who pay attention when they're holding on to a drinking glass, and people think everything's a big joke with the drinking glass. I'm eight years old, I need this kind of psychological damage. So I give her a little defensive lip back. I go, Grandma, there's two types of people in this world. People who think there's only two types of people in this world, and those of us who know better. She goes, there's two types of people in this world. People who are in my will. And you, Mr. Smarty Pants, with the funny answers. <laughs> anyway, so, um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's good to be back in New York, back in Carvel country, I guess, is what I think of it as. Yeah, Tom Carvel, baby. Yeah.